The first type of um, collectivist explanation for inequality is the idea of employment status. So some people, collectivists, would argue that wealth inequalities exist because of the type of work that people are doing. They would say that some people have a lot more money than other people because of uh, the, the type of work, the economy that we have. So if you have a stable job that pays you a salary every year that's predictable, it may even increase every year, you are more likely to have more security and to have more money, frankly, than somebody who has um, a short-term contract, part-time hours, who um, maybe their contract is going to end, maybe it has uh, different incentives in it, maybe it's mainly based on tips, um, and it's not a reliable salary. And there's been a big shift in recent years towards what's called zero hour contracts. Some of you might even have zero hour contracts. This is where the amount of work that you do each week or month or year is not guaranteed. So um, you may get 100 hours a week, you may get no hours a week, hence zero hour contracts. So you have a contract with an employer, you have to work if they, are, if they want you to work, but you're not guaranteed a certain number of hours every week. And there's also something called the gig economy job, where rather than being paid a salary, you're paid per job that you do. Um, so we see this often in like delivery drivers and Uber drivers and that kind of job, that jobs that just didn't really exist previously. Because they're much less secure, the amount that someone earns can fluctuate massively week to week, creating a huge income inequality. Um, if you're in a privileged position like I am to have a salary, the amount that I earn every week stays the same. But if you're in a gig economy or a zero hour contract and you have a bad week, that might be really disastrous for you. And of course, in the coronavirus um, era, jobs like this that have low security are really, really vulnerable, particularly things like Uber drivers, um, where people aren't really taking taxis anymore. So an example of this is that according to the Guardian newspaper, there are nearly a million people in Britain working on zero hours contracts. It's about one in 65 people. So it's a huge number. And again, as I said, I suspect some of you guys will probably be doing that. These people earn a, lose around an estimated £1,000 a year compared to ordinary employees doing the same work. So if you were um, doing a, a salary job that you were told you're going to have 30 hours a week, um, then you would make £1,000 more than somebody in the same job doing it on this kind of zero hours contract where some weeks he gets more, some weeks he gets less. Around 4.7 million people work in the gig economy doing jobs like delivering food and packages. So this is a huge number of people um, in the UK who are um, in this kind of unstable employment status. Um, so the argument that this is affecting um, wealth inequalities, creating a situation where some people have a lot more money than others, is supported by collectivists like the Resolution Foundation. They found that zero hours workers earn 93 pence less per hour compared to staff on permanent contracts doing exactly the same job. So these aren't people doing different jobs. They're doing the same job, but they're on a much less stable contract. And this is um, made way worse by the fact that people on zero hour contracts tend to also work fewer hours per week than those on permanent contracts, even if they want to work more. Many individualists would say that zero hours contracts offer choice to workers. So there was a 2013 study by the CIPD um, who found that 47% of workers on zero hours contract were actually very satisfied, were satisfied with their deal, which is nearly half of them. And 72% believes it did offer them some choice over the hours that they work. And that might work out for people who perhaps have childcare responsibilities or perhaps are doing it as a second job um, or have uh, are students or something like that. It gives them a bit more choice than being tied into specific times. And a 2017 UK government report found that while a third of employees on zero hour contracts wanted more hours, two thirds didn't. 